Welcome everyone. Today's topic is Does it matter by Richard Leakey. This is an essay and Richard Leakey is asking us a question. Does it matter? Does what matter? Who is Richard Leakey? All this we can understand going forward. So before you understand about anything, before you read a play, an essay, a poem, first you have to understand about the author. Because if you understand about the author, you can understand or you can get an idea why the author has written such a work. What inspired the author to write this work? So, let's see who Richard Leakey is. About the author. Richard Leakey, his entire name is Richard Erskine Ferrer Leakey. He is a Kenyan paleoanthropologist, conservationist and a politician. So here, we know, of course we know who is a politician. Politician is a person that is into politics. Now we have new two terms that is conservationist and paleoanthropologist. Paleoanthropologist means study of human nature, study of human beings. And conservationist from the word itself, conserve. Conserve means to preserve, conserve means to maintain. So a conservationist is a person who protects the environment or the person who protects the animal kingdom or the species as a whole. Director of the National Museum of Kenya, Head of Kenyan Wildlife Service, sorry, Head of Kenyan Wildlife Services, Professor of Anthropology at Stony Brook University. So from this we can understand that Richard Leakey has held various great positions. He was the Director of the National Museum of Kenya, Head of the Kenyan Wildlife Service and also the Professor of Anthropology. So from this we can understand that Leakey is very much involved or Leakey allows to protect the nature. He wants to preserve the nature, the species, the animal kingdom, the plants, everything. So. That is the reason why Richard Leakey has written this work. Moving forward, credited with putting an end to the elephant slaughter in Kenya. Richard Leakey, he single-handedly put an end to elephant slaughter. As all of you are aware that poachers, they capture elephants and rhinoceros. Why? In order to take their tusks, in order to get the ivory and they sell it in black market. So as a result, in order to put this to an end, Richard Leakey, what he did is that in 1989, he burned 12 tons of ivory. He gathered every ivory that was poached by the people or poached by the poachers and he put it into a bundle and he burned everything. He burned 12 tons of ivory. So as a result, his name got widespread popularity during the year 1989. The reason why he did this is because he could have taken this ivory and stored it somewhere else. But if he had stored it somewhere else, people would come again to steal from them. So as a result, he destroyed everything. So from that day onwards, poaching still continues, but it has drastically reduced. Now introduction about Does It Matter? Does It Matter is taken from his book, Leakey's book called The Sixth Extinction. And Does It Matter is part of the last 14 chapter. So what is Sixth Extinction? Sixth extinction means the extinction of species from this planet. The last extinction, that was the fifth extinction, was how the dinosaurs were wiped out from the surface of Earth. So now we are in the phase of sixth extinction. That is what Leakey is talking about. Because earlier itself we understood Leakey is a conservationist. He wants to protect the environment, the animal species. He wants to protect the Earth. So as a result, in order to educate people, in order to make the people aware about the certain situations happening here, Leakey has written this work. Leakey stresses the need to sustain ecological diversity. Leakey discusses the value of biodiversity and identifies three important areas, economic, ecosystem service and aesthetic pleasure. So Leakey goes on to say that because now human beings, we are exploiting what we are exploiting Earth, we are polluting the world, so as a result, Many animal species are being slowly disappearing. Many species have become endangered, like the tiger. So, Leakey is stating we need biodiversity. We need a large biota or a large amount of water, large amount of species in order to sustain. And he points out three things. The first one is economic, second one is ecosystem service and aesthetic pressure. In order to understand this, I'll give you an example. What happens if one day bees suddenly goes extinct? So you might be wondering, if bees goes extinct, we won't get any honey. That's true, we won't get any honey. But we can prepare honey 
artificial honey or synthetic honey. So economic value it remains. If honey goes up, we can prepare honey in lab. But the second thing, ecosystem services. These they not only produce honey, they visit a large, a massive number of flowers in a single day. As you all know, trees or plants they cannot go about having reproduction with other plants. They have to stay there and their reproduction is done through wind and also by insects and honeybee is a major player in those reproductive purpose or reproductive process. Honeybee goes and sits on the flower and when it leaves after drinking the honey or taking the honey certain small polyps sticks to its feet and when it goes and sits on another flower the pollen from the oh. earlier flower mixes with the other flower. As a result, reproduction happens. So honeybee suddenly disappears. Reproduction of plants slowly starts decreasing. As a result, what happens? Aesthetic pleasure. When we look around in the world, we see different colors of plants. But if honeybee gets extincted, then a large variety of plants and flowers, they will slowly lose their life. So moving forward, are all the existing species necessary for satisfying economic worth, ecosystem service and aesthetic pleasure or can some be lost without harm? So Leakey here asks a question, do we require every or each and every single species in this world? Is it absolutely necessary? But we don't know. We don't know what would happen if suddenly bees go extinct. We, we don't know what would happen if suddenly lions go extinct. So we don't exactly know which species are important, which species are not important. So as a result, Leakey is asking us a question. If we don't know, then why are we destroying the species? Some extinct animals are passenger pigeon, dodo bird and Malabar civet. These species have already been extincted and it is due to our interference, it is due to human interference. According to Julian Simon, recent scientific and technological advancements have diminished the importance of maintaining species in their natural habitat. Julian Simmons, he goes on to say that we don't require species. Why? Because just like I said earlier, we can make honey in labs, we can create synthetic honey. But that doesn't mean that we can reproduce plants. It is a difficult job for us. So, like Leakey said earlier, we don't know which are the most essential species in the world. So, what you have to do, you have to preserve each and every single species. We risk eroding the human soul of we, if we allow the erosion of richness, the world of the nature around us. Nigi goes on to say that if we extinct or if we kill off a certain species, what happens? We erode the human soul because human beings, they are also a part of this society. We are not special. We have also been grown from the same society. We have been formed through evolution. Human beings as well as other animals, they are all part of us. So if suddenly a certain set of animals goes extinct, our soul suffers because we won't be with them any longer. Now about the essay, ignorance about the interrelationship between species may lead to inaccurate assumptions of their value in ecosystem. Now, we don't know much about the species. Earlier, our forefathers, they used to know the name of every herbs, plants, trees. But now, currently, due to technological advancements, we don't know the importance of certain species. We are not aware of it. So, we are also not aware what would happen, what are the precautions or repercussions that would happen if certain species go extinct. The first message that fossil records gives us is that life has not been a static phenomenon. If you want to know about life or if you want to know about how life came into being, the first message that fossil records, because if you want to know about the history, the best way to look is in the fossils. So from the fossils we can understand that life has not been a static phenomenon. Life didn't just one day decide to sprout or come up. No, it took years of complicated procedures certain luck, certain good situation and that is the reason why we are standing here today. The second message of fossil records is that evolution is powerful and creative process. Evolution is powerful and creative process. Like I said earlier, it takes a large number of years or a very long time to create a certain species. 
human beings has an ethical responsibility to protect the environment. As we know now, we are at the pinnacle of the food chain. We are at the topmost level of the earth. We are controlling the earth, we are ruling over the earth. And we are considered as the apex predators or apex beings in other animal kingdom. So as a result, it is our responsibility to what? To preserve the environment. Because we as well as other species are also living here. And the ones who are polluting the world is us humans. So as a result, it is our responsibility to protect the environment. The species has time period between 1 to 10 million years on average. Mass extinctions are virtually instantaneous. However, recovery is slow process lasting between 5 to 25 million years. Then Leakey goes on to say that human beings, we won't always be living in this world. Our time period is just 1 to 10 million years. After this year, human beings, they will go extinct. So that doesn't give us license to destroy Earth now. For example, we all know that one day we are going to die. But that doesn't mean that we will spoil our career, we will spoil our life. No. Then why are we spoiling Earth? Why are we, why are we polluting Earth? You have to understand, extinction can happen within a blink of a second. A meteor can crash into Earth, or a super volcano explodes, or suddenly a tsunami came into being, or a super earthquake. Anything can happen. and the entire planet is wiped out of species. But in order for new species to come about, it takes 5 to 25 million years. While the continued destruction of biodiversity in the wake of economic development, Homo sapiens might not be the agent of the sixth extinction, but also risk being its victims. You have to understand that we are continually exploiting Earth. We are taking a number of soil, we are polluting the air, we are polluting the water, we are raising the temperature, we are creating holes in ozone layer. If we continue this process, what would happen? We won't be only the agent that creates the sixth extinction. We would also be a part of it. Because if Earth is lost to us, where would we go? Of course, you can say we can go to Mars, but Mars, there is no atmosphere. You have to create an atmosphere, you have to create an artificial atmosphere. But here, in Earth itself, we have everything. We have water, we have clean air, we have protection from sunlight, we have food, we have abundant source of natural resources. Then why are we not protecting the Earth? Now, this is Chicxulub crater. The reason I made you see this image is because this crater is believed to be formed when the asteroid hit the earth, the asteroid that wiped off the dinosaurs. So the dinosaurs, they were just wiped off from the earth within a second. It can also happen to us. We don't have any precautions to protect us from an asteroid impact. So you have to remember, we are not godly beings. We are living here. So while we are here, we have to protect water, we have to protect the environment. Now moving forward, as a conclusion, Leakey goes on to say, the previous five mass extinctions were due to natural causes. The fact that one day Homo sapiens will disappear from the face of the earth does not give us the license to, what, to do whatever we choose while we are here. So, the book is called Sixth Extinction and Five Mass Extinction that were caused due to natural disasters like earthquake, super volcano or how an asteroid came into collision with earth. But those are our speculations. We don't entirely know. The reason why we speculate that asteroid hit the Earth is because of a large crater found in Chicxulub, Mexico. But we have to understand one thing. Like I said earlier, we all know we are going to be dead. We all know that once we are born, our final destination is we will die. But that doesn't mean we are spoiling our life. We live our life to the fullest. Then why? then why are we spoiling Earth? Because one day, human beings, we have to remember that one day, the Earth will move on without us. If we keep on exploiting the Earth, if we keep on destroying the Earth, one day, the Earth will move forward and we won't be there anymore. We, like every species, share this world. So it is our responsibility to protect the Earth's biota. For a long time, mass extinctions were neglected subject of study because they were mysterious in many ways. For a long time, mass extinction, they were negative, they were put aside. Why? Because we don't have definite proof. But this time, we have definite proof. Why? Because this time, 
we are creating this mass extinction. We are slowly but surely consuming, slowly but surely destroying the earth. So, for each five mass extinctions, there are theories, some of them compelling but none proven. For the sixth extinction, we know the culprit. For the sixth, we know who the culprit is. This time, we are the asteroid. This time, we are going to destroy our world. So, it is high time to take precaution and protect our world because the earth provides us with everything. So, we should also love and respect the earth. Thank you.